Hello everyone and welcome to episode 54 of Just Dario Cigar Time. This week has been, to say the least, absolutely incredible for me. What I witnessed is something I genuinely never expected to see in my lifetime. Nvidia's name being mentioned in the same breath as Enron, Warcom and Lumen. Yes, you heard it right. And that was done by NVIDIA itself in this memo where they claimed not to be like Enron and that will surely make history. Before we begin, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications if you don't want to miss any of my future updates. It all started when NVIDIA memo originally circulated privately to about 60 Wall Street analysts leaked into the public domain instead of NVIDIA filing an ad K with the SEC, voluntarily attaching that very memo and effectively making it public for everyone. Odd, isn't it? In it, the company strongly pushed back against any comparison with the past corporate scandals like Enron or Warcom claiming such parallels were completely unfounded. Interestingly, NVIDIA chose to reboot only two specific pieces of commentary, one famously written by Michael Burry and another by a lesser known blogger that hilariously used LLMs to write his viral piece with the AI, so obviously borrowing comments from other existing research like, well, mine. Both pieces, frankly, pointed out things that have always been visible on the surface for quite some time. Things that require a fair amount of assumptions, some realistic, some less so, to turn into a full-blown bear case about NVIDIA's accounting, revenue recognition and overall numbers. This is why it is relatively easy for the company to push back on those claims. What NVIDIA conspicuously did not do was address any of the deeper forensic accounting work that a number of independent researchers, myself included, have published over the past two and a half years. For the record, I alone have written roughly 50 detailed articles on the topic, complete with documentation and forensic analysis. All of them are archived on my website if you are eager for a big deep dive to know how deep the rabbit hole is. Let me be clear. I'm not saying NVIDIA had to quote just Dario, Kakashi or JG Nuke by name. We're not that famous like Michael Burry and honestly, I don't care about the credit. Plenty of people and journalists have borrowed from our work without even mentioning it during the years. What I do care about is intellectual honesty. Filing that memo the way they did wasn't just unhelpful, it was a sloppy, almost amateurish move that achieved the exact opposite of reassurance. When I first saw it, I legitimately thought it was a fake. I couldn't believe a company of NVIDIA's size and sophistication would handle a PR crisis in this way. But it was real. And instead of calming the storm, it only fueled more questions. And then came the real earthquake, Google. Google TPUs, also known as tensor processing units, are not news to anyone who has seriously followed the real AI developments for a long time. Not the phantomatic stories spun by Nvidia and its ecosystem. TPUs have even been commercially available on Google Cloud for more than eight years. So here is the million dollar questions I've been asking for years. If TPUs have been around and commercially viable for so long, why did the entire industry suddenly decide to pile hundreds of thousands and later millions of Nvidia GPUs into data centers? Why did everyone tie themselves to a development model that is not only incredibly inefficient, but also astronomically expensive to build and operate? We have seen this movie before. January 2025, 
DeepSeek releases a model that outperforms every other one, supposedly trained for six million dollars. Everyone reaction, oh, it's Chinese, fake numbers, charity compute, whatever. Don't believe it. Okay, fine. A few months later, Moonshot AI trains a frontier model on Alibaba's stack, spending $4.5 million. And here we go again with the same excuses. Now, Google casually announces that its Gemini 3 was trained exclusively on TPUs, and they just signed a massive deal with Meta to let Meta use Google's TPU infrastructure at scale. At this point, the excuse is just the Chinese cheating no longer works. Google is as American as it gets. So what now? NVIDIA's reaction on X was telling. A lukewarm congratulatory post to Google that tried very weakly to remind everyone that TPUs are specialized and Google is still a big NVIDIA customer. It felt like damage control and a pretty lame damage control at that. Here is where we stand right now. From this moment forward, NVIDIA GPUs are the 2008 CDOs of tech. Any company sitting on hundreds of thousands or millions of them is about to have its balance sheet and CapEx decisions scrutinized like never before. The quote-unquote Steve Rock stress test moment is coming. The core questions nobody in the mainstream media is still asking are, will hyperscalers, startups, and enterprises keep blindly ordering millions more NVIDIA GPUs as if nothing happened? Or will they finally pause, rethink, and redirect capital toward far more efficient alternatives? The answer to these questions is pretty intuitive, isn't it? We already see the first cracks in the narrative. OpenAI's rumored plans to buy millions and millions of GPUs look increasingly insane. Dozens of neo cloud companies like CoreWave, Lambda, or Nebius were funded essentially as modern versions of Aeron style SPVs. Nvidia sells them GPUs they can afford today, then sign take or pay compute contracts so these companies can show future revenue streams, raise debt, and then pay Nvidia the remaining amount for their GPUs purchases. That is textbook financial engineering. Legal, perhaps but extremely reminiscent of the tricks that blew up in 2001 and 2002. Suddenly, the narrative that these GPUs have a seven to 10 years useful life and therefore can be amortized very slowly is collapsing. If the industry pivots en masse to TPU-like efficiency, all those billions sunk into H100s and Blackwell become stranded assets overnight. Write-offs in the tens of billions across the sector are now a very realistic scenario. So the big question everyone keeps asking me, Dario, is the bubble bursting? Is Nvidia going to crash? Here is my answer. As of November 2025, roughly 65% of the media shares are held by institutions. More than half of that is in passive index funds, ETFs, pension funds, and 401ks. Money that is extremely sticky. NVIDIA is in 21 major indexes, including the S&P 500. Passive vehicles and investment strategies are forced to hold it in proportion to NVIDIA index weight. Paradoxically, even if tomorrow NVIDIA admits we are the new Aaron, passive investors could not just dump the stock. They can only sell the amount by which NVIDIA's weight in the index shrinks as other companies outperform it. Meanwhile, if the Fed and other central banks resume QE, and markets are increasingly pricing that in, fresh inflows into passive funds could actually force them to keep buying NVIDIA shares even as the weight declines, at least for a while. 
This creates a perverse dynamic. The share price can stay levitated or even grind higher for months while the fundamentals rot underneath. Retail investors will watch the price and think, see, nothing's wrong, while the avalanche slowly builds. Yes, the Nvidia stock will underperform as it is already doing compared to Google. Yes, the decline will accelerate once it really gets going, but the path from today's levels to a humble realistic valuation will likely be a multi-year grind lower, not a 2001 style vertical crash, unless something extreme like a SEC investigation, whistleblowers or anything similar lights the fuse. Paradoxically, the first hyperscaler that comes clean writes off its GPU fleet and pivots aggressively to TPU-like or other efficient infrastructure could actually gain a massive strategic advantage. Being first to admit the mistake might be the best competitive move right now. And if I had to bet on this, my money would be on Meta. So that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Hyperscalers built a gigantic bridge over a river. Then a storm came and changed the river's course. This is just a metaphor, but something that really happened in Honduras after Hurricane Mitch hit the country. Billions of dollars in capital are now stranded, and the software plus data labeling efficiency demonstrated by Chinese labs and now validated by Google itself has exposed the emperors now as a new clothes, as I, of course, anticipated in episode 51. The OpenAI emperor now has no clothes. I want to thank every single one of you for listening today, for the incredible support on X, on Instagram, and for reading all the research I publish completely free on justdario.com. No paywall, no subscription ever. I do this because I love it and because the truth matters more than clicks or subscription revenue that I do not need because I believe, differently from others, I do make money following my own research. I wish you all a good end of the week and to my US followers, I wish all of you a great Thanksgiving. Talk soon.